Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific look at a certain car from the GT Sport roster and this time it's a car which I actually put off driving for quite some time, the Lexus LC500, a car which I found to be what I find most Lexus models to be. Perfectly pleasant, nothing remarkable, but certainly not something that I would dislike. That's basically the way I feel about Lexus as a brand. I respect them a lot, I think they make really good cars, cars that great for the luxury sector. I'm a big fan of the LS600H in particular, especially used. You can get a whole lot of spec for a low price. The LFA, of course, many of you guys absolutely adore that car. But there aren't really many, if any, Lexus models that I would actually go out and buy if I had the cash to. The only ones which would be an exception would be possibly the hybrid that I mentioned, the LS600, and maybe an ISF as well. I believe the ISF might be my favourite Lexus overall because it has kind of a practical sedan meets almost American muscle car kind of vibe to it, and I like that. Now this one, the LC500, which is very clearly a sports car, it's one which I kind of wrestled with as far as what series to put it in. Should I put it in Weekend Warriors, which is our series for sports cars in the Gran Turismo franchise, or should I put it in Super Sports with, as the name suggests, the super sports cars. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with why I have a difference between the two, basically a sports car to me is anything from Fiat Barchetta all the way up to Mercedes SL500, and pretty much everything in between. As an example, for instance, whereas super sports cars, I would say that's more stuff like the Alfa Romeo 8C. Something that is very fast, very exotic, but not really a true supercar, because technically it's like a reskinned Maserati Gran Turismo, and not many people would say that that's a supercar, so I wouldn't really say that the Alfa Romeo is either. So that's the kind of difference there for me. Now that brings me to the quandary, because this actually does have a similar amount of power to a DB9, or an Alfa Romeo 8C, or a Maserati Gran Turismo, all of which I would definitely say are super sports cars. This one though just doesn't feel like that even though it has a number of similar specs. It's got the 5 litre V8 engine, 469 horsepower, a fraction under 400 pound-feet of torque, and the performance is not bad at all. Not too surprisingly, it is speed limited to 155, but you could do 0 to 16 under 5 seconds. It's about 4.7. So across the board, it certainly sounds good. It's got a 2 plus 2 seat layout, which personally I'm a big fan of. I like practical performance cars, at least to some degree. Obviously, legroom isn't going to be great unless you're Douglas Barder in the back. And as far as the package itself, it's spacious, it's luxurious, it's a Lexus. So it's got an air of elegance, slightly understated, but still very classy looking. But then we get to the part which worries me the most. And that is, kind of ironically, the way in which I would say this car is the most similar to another company that a lot of Lexus models feel similar to. Mercedes. Because Mercedes does a lot of things really well. But when it comes to the SL series, they are really heavy. And as a result, they don't tend to be the best of track cars. Even something like the SL65 Black, it's obscenely heavy and it ends up being nowhere near as quick as it arguably could or should be. Certainly not as quick as that hardcore wide body in the rear wing would make it appear. Now this car suffers from a similar issue, because for one thing it has no way near the power of something like an SL65, but it also weighs 1,940 kilos. That's more than a Veyron, but it has less than half the power of a Veyron. That's a problem because for a sports car or a super sports car, regardless of how much power you've got, that's a huge amount of weight to be lugging around, especially when you do not have all-wheel drive to your advantage. Now, something like a Bentley Continental GT, for instance, is an obscenely heavy exotic car. It's one of the heaviest around. It's almost SUV territory at 2.3 tons, but even the original version had 550 horsepower, so it was still quick, and crucially, it had all-wheel drive which both justified the weight and gave you great launch. This doesn't have all-wheel drive and it has almost 100 horsepower less than something like that Bentley, which, mind you, came out around 20 years ago now. So that's kind of a worry to me. So how does it actually perform? Because you've got to bear in mind as well, it's in the N500 category, which is a very competitive one. You've got Astons, Jag F-Types, Porsche GT3s. It's a super competitive level. Well, I'm glad to say that on the one hand, 
This car is very engaging to drive. It's a lot of fun. I think it sounds very nice. It looks really good. The cockpit cam is gorgeous. So in many ways, it's very fun. It's a very enjoyable experience. And I would actually sum up my feelings about this Lexus, at least in this game, by saying that this is, as far as I've driven so far at least, in GT Sport, the closest that GT Sport has come to representing a vehicle in a way that makes it feel like Test Drive Unlimited. And I mean that as a good thing. I know a lot of people view that as too arcade-ish a game, but what I mean is, Test Drive Unlimited does a really good job of helping you to experience a car, not just to drive it. You can look around it, you can appreciate the interior, the sound, and just driving the car, just the pleasure of driving, not just racing. This feels great for that. It's the kind of sports car that you can jump in, get sideways around corners, listen to that barking engine note, which sounds great, I think, very warbly and muffled, but at the same time, the weight is so high, the power isn't overly impressive, and the performance itself is good but not great. So as a result, it's not really ever going to be the strongest of cars in whatever power category you put it in. Because no matter how much or how little power you have, even if you fully tune it, it's still ridiculously heavy. And unfortunately, the weight advantages, or the weight upgrades in particular, that you can do in this game just don't give it the edge. In order for this car to be fully competitive, you'd need to take it below its rivals, and you just can't really do that. So, ultimately it's a car which, in a similar way to some others that I've mentioned in the past, stuff like the Aston Martin Rapide in the Forza franchise, or the Tesla Model S, or for instance a Rolls Royce in the very few games that feature those, they're the kind of car that you need to experience in the real world, not in a game. Because all of the best things about the car are in real life, like the feel of the driving, the sound of the car, the comfort of the interior, the tech, the, the build quality, the attention to detail. And although you can appreciate a lot of that in a game, and that's why I say that Gran Turismo Sport does a really good job of representing that, that's about as far as it goes, or about as far as my recommendation can go, because the simple fact is, this is a six-figure car. 150,000 credits is a lot of money for a car that is as limited in its performance scope, and its competitive scope in particular, as this Lexus is. So overall, as much as I like the car, I was actually very pleasantly surprised by it, I cannot recommend it for racing. Now, I'm sure there are people who have used it and do use it for racing, and I'm not saying that you can't win in it. Of course, you can win in anything with the right driver, but it's just not going to give you a leg up. So in a funny kind of way, if you want to use it as more of a challenge, then sure, give it a go. But ultimately, I would recommend this particular car as the kind of thing to drive if you want to experience what makes the physics of this game so good. Because from a driving standpoint, it's very enjoyable. From a racing standpoint, it's not so useful. But that's it for this particular pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.